Harness Creek. This is the little this where we anchored last night. Um, we are going to take the dinghy around to a little beach we found on the satellite image. So that's our little mission to take the bikes, ride through the park, get to the mall, get some shopping, um, come back and then we'll move around to Annapolis later. So this is what it's like when we go shopping. Got to strap everything to the back of the bikes. Backpacks totally full. And um, <laughs> cycle usually a couple of miles back to the boat. Yeah. Good exercise though. Oh, that is heavy. You need to be careful the straps don't snap off. Fully loaded. Ooh. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. No room for you, sorry. Where are we going? Well, we're going to Annapolis now. Spark Creek, and we're going to take a mooring ball. We've just taken a mooring ball, and we are just off the Seven River in Spark Creek. Recently we've been having problems with the VHF, the main radio, the antenna is on the mizzen mast. I've just replaced the antenna because the old one, I tested it and it was faulty in a way, uh, just giving a very weak signal and now um, to improve things more I'm going to change the cable, upgrade the cable from the, um, the skinny, I think that's um, RG45U or A, to the X8 which is a, a thicker cable. Um, it's fully tinned as well, the, like the, the centre core is fully tinned, as though that was a, an old copper core, I think. Um, but anyway, the only way to do it is to attach the two ends together, which I'm going to do by soldering, and then pull them up. So I'll thread it in at the bottom and then pull it, and hopefully pull it out at the top. Um, it's always a bit of a tricky thing, and the other thing is there's a difference in the size of the cables, which is going to make it a little bit more tricky. So I'm going to have to make this splice really, really smooth. about kinking it. So now I've got this, uh, the new cable pulled all the way up from the bottom of the mast, all the way out the top of the mast and all the way back down to deck level again because I've got to solder 
um, a connection on this end which threads onto the aerial. Um, and in order to do that I've used the old cable to make a continual loop that goes back up inside the mast so I've got some way of drawing the end of the white cable back down again. So it's a bit of a mission but we're getting there. Hopefully weather tight. So have you found the problem? Yeah, I think I have. Um, this is a, a deck joint, which means if you want to take the mast off, you can just undo the cable. Um, and that was the bit that comes from down from the centre of the mast. And that bit get, then goes down to the radio through the deck, making a seal. And the water's been getting in around that and the, the state of the cable was joining onto it. Um, the core, I think, may have been attached still, but only just, but that's the, that's the outer core, that's the shielding. So there was no shielding connection, which is cor completely corroded through. Now I need to change the section that goes from there to the radio, uh, and then we'll have everything will be new all the way to the antenna from the radio. So it's probably 20 or 30 years old, if not 40 years old, so not really worth, worth doing. But it means another trip up to West Marine or um, Fawcett. Yeah, not West Marine, it's a rip-off. It is a rip-off, yeah, yeah. The, uh, for the here at Annapolis, the, uh, I think it's called Fawcett Marine Supplies, but they're good. This is the underside of that, and it appears to have not had any real sealant underneath it. Um, the cable looks in the hell of a state, and you can see that the, the shielding is completely gone, and the tip of that snapped off really easily, so, yeah, it's about time that was replaced with a cable. But the problem I've got here is I've gone and mounted that tight to that lip there because that was the, the best place to line up the hole that was already there. And this is wider. So now I'm going to have to take a tiny bit out of the flange and fill it with sealant and it's a bit of a mess. Oh, and it's all that black sticky yeah. stuff. Yeah, so once you've got the glue on it, it just goes everywhere and then, okay. then you end up getting it on the deck. And, and what happens if it rains? Because um, it looks like it might. It will mess up my sealant. So. Let's hope it doesn't then. I'm dying for a beer. Um, I've already got one, sorry. Yeah, you've already got one, that's why it's making things worse. <laughs> okay. I can hear you slurping away. Hello, Seahawk! <laughs> so, we've just found out you can keep your dinghy here for like two days without them caring. It's nice of them to say that because most places just hope you won't leave your dinghy around. Ready, steady, go. Oh, that's a lot of washing. Two days on the Mooring Boys here. Oh, hang on, two or three? Uh, three nights. Three nights, um, which is a bit of a luxury. Here on the Mooring Boys um, in Spa Creek. Uh, it's just been really convenient for the town, and there's loads of places to land your dinghy. Um, there are free showers and free laundry, actually, at the Harbour Master's office because the machine's broken, so you just shut the door and it starts, which is perfect. Um, so yeah, it was kind of worth paying the money because it's just so convenient and our two friends Seahawk and the tanker are here, so we've had a great time. Um, we're going to be moving just around to Back Creek now because we can anchor there for free. Someone's happy this morning. Very, yeah. So we're on our, our friend Evelyn and Thomas's boat today called Seahawk and we're going to be going for a little sail. And this is actually the boat that Ben's going to be sailing back across the Atlantic on this summer. Um, they needed crew and he didn't want to fly and it gives them some valuable experience to sort of see what the west to east crossing is going to be like. So yeah, it'd be a nice, nice day to go out and uh, 
good for Ben to see what this boat sounds like compared to ours. So good. Ours is so slow to react. Yeah. And actually, yeah, I think I can feel quite the furthest because you can feel the radical. So yesterday uh, we had our friend Neil to stay from England who was working over here in Washington and uh, had a really nice day, had some lunch, did a walk around town, um, had a really nice barbecue with him last night and Seahawk as well. And after a great day on Seahawk yesterday, they're coming on our boat today uh, to see the difference. So um, there's a little bit more wind and um, yeah, they can see what our boat's like. So it's Wednesday the 13th yeah. of June and it's my last night on the boat. Um, I'm really sad actually. No, it's going to be really weird after living together aboard for sort of, what, three years with some breaks in it. Um, obviously we have been home and we have worked and that, but really we've been living aboard for three years in each other's company for, you know, 24-7. And for the last eight months, actually just over eight months, we really we haven't been home at all. We really have been together twenty four seven. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I fly tomorrow from New York, and um, the plan was always to leave the boat in Chesapeake Bay. So Ben's actually going to uh, take the boat by himself up to Harvard Grace Boatyard um, next week. Yeah. Um, and the reason I'm going home now and Ben's not is because. I'm going to crew back on Seahawk, uh, we've known them now for well several months, a few months yeah. yeah we met them down in the Caribbean and they're returning their boat back to Holland um, and they're going to go from here or well, north of here probably New York or maybe Boston yeah. and then directly to Ireland so I'll be one of a crew of four I'm, I'm really looking forward to it it's going to be um, a great opportunity to experience that passage which I know can be a little bit well, it's certainly trickier and um, takes slightly more tactic and strategy. So then when we come to sail back next year, after we've earned some money and done a couple of repairs to the boat, um, I should know where I am and what I'm doing and hopefully have that under my belt and feel more confident. But, um, yeah, the boat's going to be out of the water for, like, ten months, we think. 
Yeah. So, yeah, so we've just been cleaning today, like cleaning out all the cupboards, trying to get all the sort of last bits of food packed away in an order and, you know, stuff that you, you need to use up whilst you're still here. And then it'll be a case of getting the boat out, packing it down, winterising it and um, yep. leaving it for 10 months. Yeah, it's going to be the first time I've had to properly winterise a boat because we've obviously we've left it in places before where it's like Portugal where it's been warm enough. But here even, yeah, although it gets to four, nearly 40 degrees in the summer, mm -hmm. it goes way down and they have like two or three feet of snow each winter. Yeah. Um, so it, this last winter apparently lots, so I'm going to have to do a really good job of of winterising the boats. That's that's another thing I've got to learn, um, which I haven't done before. So. Yeah. But as I said last night, we are off out for dinner, aren't we? Yeah, so. yeah. A friend of ours gave us a, a good heads up on a, a restaurant. So gonna have a nice meal out and uh, yeah. enjoy our last evening together. That's it. Yeah. Just about to leave for the airport. Got all my stuff. It's heavy. It's extremely heavy. I've got about 40 kilos of stuff to carry on my own um, from the plane to a train and I have to change trains. Oh, it's going to be a bit of a nightmare, but oh, I'm a little bit worried, but hopefully I'll find a nice man to help me. <laughs> Seeing as my nice man isn't actually coming with me. Yeah, my bit. <laughs> no, I'll be all right. Manhattan over there, just about to see it. Not making it this time, are we? Not this time, we haven't got time. We'll have to sail there when we get back, eh? Yeah, I'm going to put the boat up here. Oh, I'm coming up here with the other boat, though. Oh, shut up. You're going to miss me. I am going to miss you, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. But I'm going to be busy. Yeah, it's going to be uh, yeah. lots to do. Yeah. Having another little adventure before I get home as well, so... Yeah, selling with Seahawk. Yeah, it's going to be good. You're all showing one bed, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> We made really good friends with them. Yeah. Um, Are you going to film it? I'm going to film as much as I possibly can. Uh, so we're going to try and make a document of this crossing for people because it's one that a lot of professional sailors do, but not so many um, private boats do it, really. It's the harder crossing, isn't it, going west to east rather than east to west like we've already done? Yeah. Yeah, it's um, because it's not a trade wind route. You're stuck in the in the flow of the um, the low pressures that go from west to east back back towards the UK. And if you get it wrong, it can be. I think you can get some fairly horrendous passages. If you get it right, it can be really quite pleasant. So it's just one of those things. It's very variable. Well, I'll be keeping my fingers crossed and worrying from home. Yeah. It's uh, July 18th, um, I'm leaving Annapolis after being based here for two weeks nearly. Um, I'm sailing alone after dropping Nikki back at JFK and now I'm sailing the boat north up the Chesapeake Bay. Um, to go to the Tidewater Marina boatyard um, in Havre de Grace where the boat's going to be hauled out and then left for quite a while whilst we go back and earn some money and, and consider what we're going to do next so it'll be the end of next winter before we we come back to the boat so it's a, it's a big change for us we're not even sure where we're going to live in the UK but anyway, it's nice got enough wind to sail just about 10 knots
So I'm halfway up to um, the Sassafras River. I'm, I've got about another hour at this speed to get into Sassafras River. I'm going to anchor there overnight and then tomorrow morning I'll sail just across the top of the bay to um, Tidewater Marine Act, where that's where we're going to leave the boat. Um, I've got two weeks or just under two weeks to do some work. Um, I'm doing this bit to camera because the guy's just, I've just passed someone. He's, he was going downwind while I started beating up. And he stood up on the deck and he waved at me and, and uh, shouted, Welcome to America. And um, said he'd sailed around uh, my country, sailed around the UK two years ago. Um, we've had, I've had a few occasions like that where people have um, yeah, just gone out of their way to be friendly. Um, there was a guy at the fuel dock in Annapolis the other day, just gave me like a can full of fuel for my dinghy for free. Um, I've got the same, the, like the boating community here in America is the same as most, most places generally. There's a lot of cool people who are out just living the, the dream, the life of freedom, and, and, uh, and, they, and they carry that attitude with them. And um, it's really cool to meet people like that. Um, so yeah, it's good. It's been a good day. It's been a hard to sail. Um, the wind's up and down a lot. It's been from like, 5 knots to 25 knots about three times. So I'm getting there. Um, it's just beating if the wind is slow. I mean, I'm only carry on doing it because we've got a little bit of time with me so I'm kind of making four knots but the boat's only sailing at three so yeah I just thought this is the last chance I'll get to sail anywhere um, on Bora Bora for a long time maybe maybe ten months so I better sail all the way Bye bye. bye bye. See you in two weeks. Yes. And safe sailing. You too. Have a nice lift out. Have a nice lift out. <laughs>